All right. Hello, everyone. This is Aquas, the host of the SDG Weekly, and this is going to be episode 30 on Flying Shark, also known as Sky Shark in uh, European regions, then also known as Hisho Zame uh, for the Japan region. And uh, this week, we're going to be taking a look at a one, uh, one loop uh, clear plus some. Um, from Trap15, who will also be joining us on commentary, uh, just Trap today. So, hey, Trap, how's it going? Pretty good. We're going to talk about some of this uh, classic shmup goodness, of course. And uh, also, um, today, uh, I'm going to be demonstrating that uh, you can recover uh, from pretty much all the checkpoints in this game. Um, it has a, a lot of different checkpoints where when you die, um, of course, you have to restart at a certain point. Um, you don't auto-respawn, um, but the developers uh, boasted that in this game um, you can recover from any checkpoint. And uh, some people it might not you know, believe it, but uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely true. And it's not that hard either. Um, of course, I am practicing the game a bit, but that is also going to be happening uh, after we take a look at Traps Replay. Um, so, yeah, a bit about Flying Shark uh, before we go into the replay. Um, it's one of these uh, shmups that um, it's pretty much the sh it's pretty much the shmup like of all shmups. Uh, it, it the main thing, uh, kind of the main no notoriety about it is that uh, it's kind of cited to be the inspiration for Raiden, which everyone knows as pretty much the poster child shmup in America, um, at, le at least in America. Um, you know, there's Raiden, there's Raiden cabs still floating around in, like, r resorts and Raiden fighters cabs, pretty much, at, at, like, anywhere you go in uh, America. They're still hanging around, but Raiden, of course, is the main popular uh, shmup, but... Flying Shark, uh, the gameplay in it um, very much so resembles a Raiden game, and that's because I think it's the kind of you got your kind of slow ship speed, but the bullets are pretty fast. So it's like when you're moving around, the bullets are kind of chasing you a little bit. It's kind of got that kind of feel to it, um, but it's just one of the it's. It's one of these shmups that uh, really, I think, set the bar for, um, you know, kind of set the bar for what, uh, like, a classic traditional sh uh, shooting game gameplay is like. And so, uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, it has, uh, it came on the arcades in uh, 1986. Um, this, game, this is a game by Toa Plan, and before this... Uh, their, the previous two uh, shooting games they did were Slap Fight. Well, actually, it's 1987 for this game. Um, Slap Fight in 1986 and Tiger Heli in 1985. Um, and those were, I mean, those are good games. Slap Fight is pretty damn cool. Um, but they didn't quite have the uh, exhilarating gameplay that Flying Shark has. Um, Tiger Heli, I mean, it's it's fun, but it's, I don't know, it's not... <laughs> I don't know. I like yeah. Tiger Heli, but Slap Fight, yeah, I'm not a fan of Slap Fight. Slap Fight was the one where uh, you, you kind of like grab power-ups, right? Yeah, it's got like the Gradius power-up bar sort of thing, and it sort of just doesn't feel right. Especially because when you start stacking on like options, your hitbox gets huge, and you can't move because all of your uh, options are restricting you on the sides all oh, right right um that must have came out after gradius huh a little uh, i think it did yeah because i mean gradius is of course known for the power of bar um but yeah so uh yeah flying shark came out in 1986 um let's see what was the game they did after after this uh oh yeah uh, Twin Cobra. they did uh kyukyoku tiger after yeah, this yeah. also known as um twin Cobra. okay yeah, uh, twin Cobra. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and so uh, Flying Shark, um, it was you know very popular in arcades. Uh, it and then it ended up getting um, many different ports uh, on systems like the Amiga, the Commodore 64, DOS, the X Spectrum, Armstrad, CPC, the Atari ST, FM Towns, and on the NES. I know some people 
here probably played the uh, NES version. Um, I never played it that much, but um, it, of course, uh, most of these ports are inferior to the arcade version as it, as it usually was because the ports were trying to give you a taste of what the arcade was, but it never it never really matched up. Uh, unlike today, uh, I kind of got like these more modern ports. Um, they're usually pretty close to the arcade, so <laughs> kind of a difference, yeah. kind of different from back then to now. Um, but, uh, okay, yeah, so, um, I guess we're going to the little gameplay mechanics here real quick. Uh, yeah, so very, tra it's a very traditional shmup. Um, there's, uh, you, you grab power-ups from, uh, destroying, uh, formations of red planes. And, uh, those will, you, like, you, your, your main shot starts out at one, uh, kind of pea shooter. And then when you get another one, it adds, uh, two more shots. So you gotta kind of get, like, a double barrel shot. Then as you add another, it starts to, it starts to become a smaller spread shot, and then he has more and more. Your spread shot gets wider and wider, and it's just that's that's pretty much the shmup weapon is the spread shot. Um, it's just it's just so helpful in uh, getting all the enemies on the screen. And then of course you have bombs in this game. Uh, they're pretty good. They don't protect you right away when you use them, but once they land, uh, any bullets that go into the bomb radius are uh, nullified. So they're pretty useful for protecting yourself when uh, you need to do like a turn to the other side of the screen. Um, also, a uh, nice key feature about the game is that when you beat a stage, you get your bomb stock refilled, and that's a it's a really good part about the game um, because it really uh, lets you it really encourages you to use the bombs and not just like stock them like hoard them and think like oh I need to save them for a certain point. Like they really want you to use them, and they do come in handy quite a quite. They do really come in handy. They're pretty powerful as well. Um, pretty much any any enemy that gets caught up in them is gonna die for the most part. Um. So yeah, and then uh. Hmm. So yeah, there's five stages. Um. And then uh, yeah. So uh, trap. I I want to ask you about this. So. Yep. There's a hundred. There's a the game lists a hundred areas depending on where you like game over in the game. Like there's a different areas that you go through, and then at, at the hundredth area, that's when you loop, and then you start going to the hundred and whatever areas. But is yeah. there che is there checkpoints for every single area, or is there like is it like every five or so? I believe it is one checkpoint per area. So there are a hundred checkpoints in the entire game. Man, because I, I was I was like thinking about that, and I was like, "Is that really true?" Because <laughs> I'm ninety nine percent sure that is true. Man, because that's a lot of checkpoints. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the fact that they're all there is just like it's just it's just really we it's just crazy. Because <laughs> like yeah. yeah, I was thinking maybe it was like every uh, like five areas or something, but I, I get, yeah, I mean. I, if you yeah if you if you're pretty sure I mean that's that's pretty awesome um, yeah so yeah you got you got a lot of checkpoints uh, and you know you can recover from pretty much anyone if you use your bombs right if you if you use the shots right um, but uh, we'll begin to that we'll begin to the kind of demonstration of recovering later and uh, yeah recovering uh, is kind of a shmup term it pretty much means uh, when you die uh, re successfully recovering is coming back from a loaf from your minimal firepower and then powering back up and then resuming the game without like dying over and over and over like a successful recovery is coming back and actually surviving and progressing with the game so that's what we mean when we when we talk about recovery um so i think that's pretty much gonna um sum up pretty much the parts of the game uh throughout the game there's also uh you know you can you can pick up bombs and stuff. Uh, there's a couple of secrets related to the bombs, but we'll I think we'll get into that with the replay. And um, if this uh, footage that you're looking at right now looks kind of crazy, it's because the guy is playing on uh, like the fifth loop. Uh, this is a this is a pretty old shmup where the standard was pretty much uh, the games will play uh, indefinitely. Um, they tend to get harder after every loop that you go through. Um, so this guy, I think this guy is playing on like the fourth loop or something right now. So. Um, when we watch the trap three play, it's going to be quite a bit more tame. But the bullets, of course, get faster and faster as you go through the loops, and uh, it just gets more difficult. And I think the enemies get some more HP as well, is what I understand. Yeah, the enemies get more HP, and uh, the um, bullet ceiling 
like I think it goes away completely in the second loop. Right. Yeah, and then when, and yeah, and when we say uh, bullet ceiling too, that's like uh, that's a thing, a very common thing you kind of find in the traditional shmups and even the Raiden games. Uh, when you're close to an enemy, uh, it means that they won't shoot at you when you're when you're close enough to them. So yeah, when he says the bullet ceiling goes away. That means uh, when you're closer to the enemies, they don't really care anymore, and they're just going to shoot you anyway unless you shoot them down. Um, so, yeah, bullet ceiling is a thing. Um, all right, so I think we could probably just get into your replay now and uh, talk, just talk about some various things. Um, all right. So you want to pr- uh, kind of uh, intro your replay or kind of what skill level you're at when you're doing this and that type of thing? Sure. Um, this is uh, kind of... a uh bad replay i've uh done a lot better since i recorded this um this one pretty much just goes through the first loop and then dies in the first stage of the second but uh yeah. it gets seven hundred thousand points um and it has some pretty good recoveries in stage four and five in my opinion so it, it should do well to uh show how I wouldn't say easy it is to recover, but how it's definitely possible, even when it seems like it probably wouldn't be. Cool, cool, sounds good. And uh, you know, um, I I like to uh, I, I like to recommend this game to uh, beginners of shmups because uh, it really teaches like a fundamental um, idea in uh, shmups where basically you're just going from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Um, and that's all you're doing in the game. And then, and then uh, the other kind of main fundamental is uh, kind of learning uh, enemy locations a little bit and adjusting towards that. Like this game, it, it, it really emphasizes it. And there's not, there's not a lot of enemies to make it super difficult, but there's just enough that they're going to annoy you and you're going to want to remember kind of where some of the enemies are. But I really like to recommend this one because it just kind of teaches... Uh, that kind of fundamental gameplay, and uh, it's uh, it's just a classic. It's just a good one. All right, so I think uh, we'll get into your replay now and uh, see how see how it goes. All right. And uh, I'll do the countdown. All right, three, two, one, click. It's like uh, five seconds of black there. Yep, and then just the checking and the uh, little copyright screen. So you're playing on uh, the Japanese version, which is Hishozame? Yes. Uh, now, uh, yeah, Emphatic asked us about the uh, regional differences. Trap and I don't really know th- uh, that well the differences, but I, I have the suspicion, and I think I, I've tried testing this multiple times, but I have the suspicion that the Japanese version is only very slightly harder than the other versions. Um, that's all I can really say about that. Yeah, that sounds pretty much like uh, my opinion as well. I don't think there's a significant difference. Yeah. And the title screens, of course, are, are changed up a bit. To right. Reflect the title. Yeah, Flying Shark is the uh, American title. Right. And so I missed that first power up ship because nice. <laughs> I wasn't feeling it, I guess. Oh, yeah. So, the, yeah, there's only, like, a kind of few different types of enemy planes going on here. Like, uh, yeah, the gray ones just kind of just kind of fly at you, but uh, if you're if you're close to them, though, they'll, like, well, those ones just fly right by you. What the hell? <laughs> no, <laughs> they, uh, they only fly past you if you're not right in their way. But if you're right in their way, they'll swing out of the way so they don't kamikaze okay. you. So like right away uh, in this first stage, you get like tanks just coming out of like the huts and then coming out from the sides of the screen, um, just kind of you know, kind of making you aware that like the enemies are gonna come from pretty much all sides and places. <laughs> You could probably say the uh, term sniper tank came from this game as well. For where, sure, uh, if you like, saw that tank that was hiding in those trees right there that you'd never notice if you hadn't already been killed by it. 
<laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, the term sniper tank kind of refers to, uh, like, a, just an enemy that you don't really see, and they usually get you from the side, <laughs> or from, like, the edge of the screen, and it's like, it's like you got sniped, basically. And so here's the first boss. I think this is the only boss in the game aside from the uh, last stage boss. Ah, I see. Yeah. There's a little mini boss there. Really simple, just spread pattern there where you just dodge the middle bullet. Kinda yep. Move left, right, Stage left, one, right. no big deal. They, uh, they actually don't have stage one in the loop. When it loops, it just goes right to stage two because the designers thought that if you could get into the second loop, you didn't have to do stage one on it because it was so easy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to link to these uh, kind of developer interviews to be kind of referenced to as well in the YouTube video. They're pretty interesting. I'll kind of mention stuff like that. Now they bring you into a kind of sea, a kind of sea ocean stage. Yeah, and then like those uh, those green planes, they just fire once. They fire one spread shot pattern, but I, I believe it is aimed though. The, yeah, the yeah, they're uh, yeah, it's like the spread shot from the uh, first boss. Actually, it's just yeah. three shots. The center one's aimed at you, and the rest are around you. All right, so I noticed you got the uh, white the white plane formation to come up. We don't know what causes it. Um, we have some suspicions, but. Uh, when you destroy them, you get a one-up, which is kind of nice. Uh, what was it we were thinking that, like, uh, like destroying certain like formations fully or something might? Yeah, it? it might be something like destroying a certain amount of formations or clipping a certain amount of them so that they fall down instead of exploding or the other way around. There's so many different possibilities that it's hard to sort of just figure it out. So there's another uh, mid-boss plane, and that's the first time you used a bomb as well. Um, just a really good idea to use a bomb there because if you're trying to dodge everything, it's kind of get like you got bullets kind of surrounding you, and you're only going to be dodging it if you're really doing like a kind of tapping left or right, like slowly type of movement. But it's a lot safer just to, safer just to use your bomb, and you did, and you just took it out right away. And you still yep. got plenty of bombs. I actually so it's like, uh... a big deal. When I've been playing recently, I've been trying to not bomb on him for the uh, extra 3,000 points at the end of the stage. Oh, okay, and, uh, sure. It, it's definitely possible to take all that out without a bomb. It's just yeah. way easier to just use a bomb. You might as well. Yeah, this is like the little part where they give you a break. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, the game does not have uh, rapid fire either, so... Uh... You're going to be mashing that shot button in this game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Auto was... fires for scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> well. I, I always like to think of the little lulls in the action as a break for your hand. <laughs> it's like you get, to, you get to like shake it off or whatever. It's like, oh, my hand. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you get yeah you get a bomb bonus yeah you, like you said three thousand per bomb you get a pretty nice bomb bonus there, then you get to extends uh, I don't remember what the extends are at or extra life for points. The extends are at uh, fifty thousand and then every hundred and fifty thousand after that. Okay, so you're gonna get one at twenty here. Uh, two, yeah. Two hundred thousand that is. Yeah, and so this part right here. You pretty much have to destroy those boats and then head right off to the left, or those tanks are probably going to snipe you. Yeah. And that's never fun. Yeah, they almost got you two there. Yeah, that part can, will probably kill you on your first try, because, like, they, they sneak those tanks in so suddenly, <laughs> and if you're not ready for it, they just kind of crisscross you a bit. Yeah. There's the one up. So yeah, your spread shot's pretty uh, beefy now, which is nice. Yep. I think there's one more power level to go. Yeah, I probably think so, probably. And so the trick I've come up with here is to remember that you have to shoot four boats and then just go right under that 
big uh, uh, that big plane just mash the heck out of the fire button to kill him before you can even get all the way on the screen. So yeah, we're just doing the uh, left and right motions here, just dodging stuff. That's all you do. <laughs> 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 Until the sniper tanks come, at least. Yep. Some people give this game flack for having that pattern with the uh, Zako enemies right there, mm. like, all over the stages, but I think it's really nice because it's not really a threatening pattern, but it's uh, enough to keep you on your toes. Yeah. Just keeps you doing something. Yeah, this part, uh, you really want to try to make sure to get those tanks on the left, and, and you did get them pretty much right away. Otherwise, like, if you're on the right side of the screen, and uh, you didn't notice they came from the left, like, you're not going to be able to kill them, and then they just, they just attack you, like, the whole time. And, yeah, that's not going to be pretty. There's like there's like four tanks that like come from that left side that left green side. Yeah. But you kill them like uh, pretty much right away, I I think. Yeah, I did. Because like you said, if you don't kill them pretty much right after, they're going to just keep shooting you and you're never gonna get a chance to kill them. Yeah. It'll be like a sh like a sh like a shooting range type of thing for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like get them. So yeah, third third stage here. Uh, Earth, isn't isn't this the fourth stage? Oh, the fourth. Okay, well, pretty short game. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like 20 minutes a loop. Yeah. Definitely, uh, just a really nice length. A little striped uh, thing there. I call that the hot dog stand. <laughs> <laughs> no significance. All right, so coming up is a part where you, you really, you you really want to use your bombs. This guy has a lot of HP. Yeah. And he, he he shoots like a long burst of bullets at you, aimed bullets, and uh, he only gives you a couple moments to switch sides. But you're probably just gonna bomb him here. Yeah, I. Uh, yep. Don't try to mess with this guy because he wrecks me if I try to not bomb him. Yep. So this little part, uh, yeah, I was going to explain it. Uh, yeah, so you, like you grabbed a bomb there, but then you grabbed another bomb and another one. But uh, if you if there's one bomb on the ground and you destroyed the other part where there was a bomb, you actually do not get uh, another bomb. Only one can be it pretty much on the ground at a time from those uh, destructions. So and so in that way, he actually got an extra. He actually pretty much just got an extra bomb. Yep. And, and there's a couple other parts in the game that does that too. Yeah. I think uh, stage five has like two or three of those. Mm. And this big, this part gets kind of hectic. Yeah. Oh. And uh, there goes my first death. Yeah, they get you there because if you're just like, you're just holding left, but like the very far shot was just perfect to get you. <laughs> yep. From from uh, thinking you were safe just from moving left constantly. So here we go. Here's a recovery then. Uh, bomb it out. Yep. So there you go. You're on your way. This is a pretty one of the more difficult recoveries too. Yeah, I th I think this is probably the checkpoint that I have practiced the most mm -hmm. just because it gets me every time. I see. Yeah. Yep. And there we go. Oh, uh, that yeah. was quite a failure right there. The runway was in it was in sight. <laughs> yeah, you got through the hard part but then the the last tank there got you. <laughs> yep. Like ah god, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this checkpoint's definitely about knowing where to drop your bombs. Nice little dodge there, too. You kind of waited for a moment, and then yeah. you moved right, just so that the bullets kind of lined up on you. 
Yeah, I, I think that's another thing I really like about this is the ship speed. While, I mean, a lot of people say that the ship is way too slow, but I think it's just right for getting those little dodges around the fast bullets. Yeah. Well, because you don't want to go too fast when you're trying to, yeah, get a dodge in. Like, you want to have it just right. Well, I'm uh, not doing too hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these guys kind of rush you, and then they, they keep flying at you, and they keep shooting at you. They're actually kamikaze planes, unlike those other ones that fly out of the way. Like, those ones just fly into you. Yeah, and uh, an interesting note, where they spawn is partly random, oh, okay. but uh, the oh. side of the screen that they spawn on is determined by which side of the screen you're on. And they spawn on the opposite side. I see. That's cool. So they're really trying to mess you up. Yep. Pretty good bomb there. Yeah, I, I, I like that uh, power up plane formation just because it gives you a nice little opportunity to just bomb them and get a power up real quick. Exactly, exactly. Oh, you missed the power up there though. Yeah, it might, uh... it might haunt you. <laughs> uh... Yeah, for this part, you really gotta make sure you get those uh, the, those round tur the round turrets. Yeah, for sure. Because if you miss one and like you're on the other side of the screen, you're probably gonna get killed. But you managed to get through. Oh shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. So you've been losing lots of lives, but since there's so many checkpoints, you've been inching your way towards the end. Yep. And uh, no, this, the uh, part, extend rate's yeah. pretty nice too, yeah. so it's not a big deal. Yeah, you get yeah probably at least a few, few or like four lives or so from points if you get this far. This part just gets kind of crazy because there's a lot of bullets. But you're just dodging them just because you're just moving left and right, you know? Yep. And uh, it's really nice how the tanks, you can just blow the top off of them and then you don't really have to worry about them right. Ooh, after nice. that. Yeah, exactly. Just you gotta hit them with one shot and then you're okay. Yeah, even Aww. in the loop where uh, the tanks have tons more life, just shooting them once blows the top off, so you don't actually have to worry about mm -hmm. them. So it's got tanks from everywhere here. And actually, here's another spot with the bombs. The uh, bottom outside tank always drops a bomb, so either on the left or the right you can get one. Oh, okay. Hmm. Didn't know that. Nice. Yeah, the bomb. Yeah, the bomb was so sandy there. And you got through. Yep. I like the song in this in this stage. It's just like. Yeah, it's really triumphant. It's very good stage five music. It's like, you can do it, buddy. <laughs> That's the impression I get from it. Yeah. It's like, you can do it, but we're still gonna fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty epic. I don't take any chances on that boat, because that thing will start shooting at you before you'd expect it. Yeah, and yeah. And then you're dead. Yeah. Bomb is really good for safety there. It's like the climax of the song. Right before the final boss. The big, big guy. So yeah, he's just got this like aimed shot with the spread, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna dodge too hard but you want to dodge just a little bit. And that's kind of like the moral of uh, dodger patterns. 
is, or uh, the ones that are gonna catch you. Like you just want to stop before you, right before, uh, right after you dodge the part, just to make sure you don't get hit. For sure. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got trapped nice. in that corner there, and uh, was pretty afraid for a bit there, and then I realized I had a bomb. Yeah, that that worked out great. That was pretty epic. Epic shark. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that's the end of the first loop. And so then I'm gonna throw you right into the second stage. <clears throat> well, the second part of the first stage, I should say, right? Or... No, it's actually the, oh, is it the total second? second stage. Oh, okay. I thought this was the first stage music. Oops. <laughs> So, yeah, bolts will be slightly faster now. And, uh, also a change in the, uh, loops is, like, the turrets will, like, they'll fix their aim on you a little faster. Um, like, the ones where they're, like, have, like, a little cannon that's, like, rotating. Um, they'll kind of lock onto you faster. Because sometimes yeah. you can, like, fly around enemies and they'll, like, th they won't shoot until they have, like, a lock on, basically. Um, but these enemies just kind of shoot at you, or whatever. The boats. Last life! <laughs> yep. <laughs> I can't remember if I get killed at... Uh... Oh wait, never mind, I'm thinking of a different stage. <laughs> oh nice, you got one up. Still in it. You get the full, like the big power right now. Yep, I'm doing pretty all right. And then, uh, yep. I like how I like how the uh, planes uh, die in this game. Like some of them will just pop, and then others will like, you know, uh, fly fly into the ground and such. And uh, the ones that fly to the ground, they'll actually uh, hurt enemies on the ground too if they land on them. Yeah, that's really cool when you first notice that. Like, it didn't took me a long time to notice that myself. I was like, yeah, I think crap. I actually do that in stage one on this replay. I see. So, uh, if you missed it, you can go back and check that. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who's watching this on YouTube. Yeah, that, that kind of detail was probably a big deal uh, at the time. Uh, silly death here. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of misjudged, misjudged it there. Yeah. Trying to go back. He's like, nah. This part's kind of tricky because it's like you got to make sure to get the ones from the right, and then the ones that come out, and then those ones. It's like, oh, you oh, barely survived it. <laughs> that was close. Oh, oh, yeah. I get a little confusing just because it's the two of them. Yeah. Because I usually don't have to fight both of them at once because I've already killed the guy on the left. Yeah. And, like, yeah, you can dodge, like, both of them kind of reliably. But just by kind of, like, dodging slowly. But it's, like, you get kind of confused when you're trying to, like, kill off one of them. Like, because you want to deal the damage, but you can't stay in one place for too long, so they really, yeah. they really kind of test you there. Like, can you do it? Nah, you're fucked. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, you gotta get the exclamation points in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> gotta put them in at the runway. So there you have it. It was a pretty good run for what it was. Yeah, it was alright. It uh, definitely showed what I wanted it to show. Yeah, you had some good recoveries in there, and so like, uh, what's what? So what's your best? Uh, what's your best now in the game? Um, let's see, something like one point two million, and that's somewhere late in the second loop. Cool. Cool. Um, Alright, well, uh, yeah, uh, not a short episode, uh, so now, 
I'm actually going to be doing a demonst live demonstration of uh, the that you can recover from any checkpoint, and this could uh, this could go bad. It could be funny. Um, it could go good, <laughs> but uh, basically, the developers designed the game so that you can re recover from every checkpoint in the game. So, Trap's going to help me out here and try to point out the most difficult ones if I if I try to pass one, but. I will kind of credit feed and maybe uh, I'll, I'll probably just try to pick the hardest ones. Um, so I'll have to use my judgment, but uh, it's going to be some live play from uh, myself. And then uh, pull up uh, pull up the game here. And uh, just as a, for a, a sort of a fun thing to do, um, a little different thing, just to show it, just to kind of show off the feature of the game, which uh, is probably one of the, I think it's one of the coolest parts about it. <laughs> because you have a, uh, you have like the stigma with shmups um, in general from I think just people who play them and people who you know casually play them or don't play shmups a lot like the whole stigma of when you die you know it's it's like you it's really hard to recover and while it is hard to recover at some places um, if you would if you were to say credit feed or something in an arcade. Um, you could probably get past these checkpoints after uh, after a few tries, and you kind of figure it out. And plus, you get to use bombs as well, so that really helps out. But I'm gonna try to like do I'm gonna try to like do most of the recoveries without bombs, though. Um, some of them you really do need to use them, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And so this will be kind of interesting too, because uh, I feel like I'm I'm fairly decent at the game. Uh, I I can beat the second loop. So I've kind of learned uh, a lot of these checkpoints, so I'm going to try to get the game up here. And uh, I just double-checked my best, and it looks like I game over on the last checkpoint before the final boss in the second loop. Ah. Uh. It's always disappointing when that happens. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a look, little look at the chat here, see if you guys mention anything of, in particular. If you guys have any, like, uh, extra, you know, info about the game, feel free to say it in the chat, of course. The episodes go up on YouTube. Um, you guys are just kind of having fun. That's cool. Well, whatever. You can take a look, Trappin, I guess, if anything piques your interest. All right, uh, all right, so I suppose we'll get on to this, uh... I guess I'll, I, I mean, I'll, pretty much I'll, I'll be playing regularly, um, but uh, at any checkpoint that I think is difficult, I'll just die on purpose. <laughs> 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 and then I'll try to play from there. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a demonstration of recovery in Flying Shark. So, see how it goes here. Um, no. The... Never mind. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I got the gameplay up now. Yep. So, I mean, the first stage, I probably don't need to die, huh? I mean... No, I don't think uh, any of the checkpoints are hard yeah, in stage the checkpoint, one. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I like to try to wait for the last red plane to come like closer, so that uh, you can grab it like right off the bat. But I didn't. So yeah, there are a hundred. There are a hundred checkpoints in the game. <laughs> it's because Brooke asked how many checkpoints there are per stage. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure there's a hundred. I'm just gonna die and see what this one is. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one might be a little weird. Yeah, this one actually is kind of hard ish. So, yeah, I got the tanks on the left there. It's, it's, yeah, I mean. And then the boats come. Get those guys on the side. Uh oh, the guy on the right. Oh, but he stopped firing. So yeah, first recovery is a success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dying again. 
Alright, let's see what this one is. Alright, so now we're by the we're starting right by the huts after the boardwalk. Probably not a big deal here. <clears throat> yeah, 20 checkpoints per stage is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? It's hard to believe, honestly. <laughs> There's probably a lot less in the earlier stages and then a lot more in the later ones. <clears throat> ah. It's kind of it's kind of fun because uh, it's like I am kind of curious to see like where all the checkpoints are, you know? Like I, yeah, because there's like, like some places where you've never died, so yeah, yeah. you don't see the checkpoint for it. So you could die against this guy, and you, you have to fight him with the pea shooter. So why don't we just check that out? Yeah, that one's actually not as easy as you'd expect. Oh, they, oh, okay, so this one, they actually threw me right on top of those uh, turret buildings. Oh, okay. Wow, so th so this one's like, you gotta be like ready for it. <laughs> yeah. And suppose if it was your first time playing, you'd be like, ah, they're, they're right there, shit. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Oh, they got me. <laughs> Man. But I didn't use a that bomb, though. That pretty crazy. Yeah. So I could have used a bomb, but I didn't. So let's just, re let's just uh, try that again. Do some good old credit feeding. Oh, so I, I guess this is the last checkpoint of the stage. Because I went back to the same yeah. one. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh. I didn't kill some guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, I gotta, I gotta summon the power of the Red Baron. <laughs> <laughs> Red Baron Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think get him here with the pea shooter. Ash that oh, button. Man. It's it's hard with the pea shooter and no bombs. But, okay, they, they expect you, though, to use yeah, a bomb. Yeah, I think they expect you to use a bomb yeah, there. Yeah, so let's just use a bomb this time. Because, I mean, uh, like I say, yeah, you get, the, you get the bombs restocked at the end of a stage, so there's really no reason not to use one here. So let me just use one. It's going to damage him quite a bit. And it kills him. But killing him without a bomb, though, that's pretty rough. Yeah. All right, so that did it. So there you go. Um, yep, just use a bomb and you're good to go there. For the most part. All right, so I'll get the pea shooter. So we're good to go here. Nice thing about the game is that it's like pretty simple, and at the same time, it's pretty fun, and uh, and not like incredibly challenging either. I think. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's an easy game, but it's definitely not super hard. Hmm. All right. Well, I died. Um, that was not on purpose, though. <laughs> 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 I was just basically autopiloting. Alright, so let's get this will be a checkpoint. Yeah, this one's a bit tough. This one's something. Yeah, making sure to kill the small boats is pretty much the key the key thing here. Cause if any of them pass you and you don't if you don't get their top they're gonna be hitting, like, you know, attacking you from the side, so. Just kinda focus on them. Probably be okay. And they, uh, note about those green planes that try to avoid kamikazeing into you. They, uh, they will still shoot you from the very bottom of the screen. 
So if you oh, let really? one pass, it probably will snipe you from the very bottom, and you'll never know until you're dead. Oh man, I met that part with I met this part without with the pea shooter. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that ain't working out. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of foolish. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a crapshoot, because like, sometimes I'm like playing seriously, <laughs> and then sometimes I'm just like fucking around. And then other times it's like purpose. It's on pur okay, it's not on purpose unless I say it is, but... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... If you die here, you get to use a bomb. I mean, that's just a given. Yep. <clears throat> and you get you get another bomb there, so. Oh, this one might be hard on a, uh... Oh yeah, alright, I'm gonna die on purpose. With the, with the two guys? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, this one, yeah, puts you right, right at the beginning of the sea. Yeah, this is a pretty difficult one, so... Pretty sure I can do this, though. It, this one, uh, is really, uh, Im like, um... It's really important to get those power-up guys. Well, and these tanks at the, at the very beginning on the right. Yeah, and it's also kind of a crapshoot too, because it's like, you know, I have like, you know, my base skill in shmups, so it's like, I don't know. Well, it, it just goes, to, it's just a demonstration. I don't need to think too hard about it, I guess. <laughs> but like, uh, the reason I am like dodging a lot of stuff is because like, I, I'm paying, I'm, I'm being mindful of uh, the um, how periodic the, the enemies shoot. And so right. with, with that uh, knowledge in mind, you can uh, you predict your uh, dodges from left to right. Like that's also like a really important fundamental aspect about the traditional shmups is uh, learning the frequency of the enemy fire. Yeah, es for sure. Especially when the bolts are fast. And uh, to answer the chat question, the scoring is just points for everything you kill points for damaging things, um, the points from the uh, yellow planes, and uh, the end stage bomb bonus. Right. And then I guess if you're limiting how many loops you can play, you probably just want to uh, milk the last checkpoint on the last loop you want to play. Alright. Okay, so this is a kind of trickier checkpoint, I guess. Starts you right at that beach part with the tanks coming from the right, the left, and the right, and then the two planes into the sea. I would say, yeah, you always want to use a bomb in those two planes if you're recovering here. Yeah, um, I for did. sure. I mean, I did, but I used it pretty late. For the most part, like you can hang out at the very bottom of the screen, but there are points in the game when, uh, like, a medium plane will fly onto the screen. And uh, he'll he'll bump into you at the bottom of the screen, and that that's, yeah. that sucks. But uh... <laughs> All right, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die real quick here. See what the checkpoint. Oh, is right yeah, this is a hard one. Yeah, I might have passed it an accident though. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, this is yeah, this is the one. Yeah, this is a hard one. In uh, the second loop, that last uh, boat that you never really see on the first loop on this checkpoint, mm -hmm. he, uh, he turns fast enough that he will shoot you from the very bottom of the screen. Yeah, yeah. So here, yeah, I just like to kind of do like this kind of uh, circular, circular motion. 
And so, like, I'm dodging the, the boats on the bottom right. And at the same time, I'm, like, kind of killing those turrets. So that was kind of, like, the technique there that I like to use. Because if you, if you, if you fly straight right and you try to get those, like, boats, um, it's probably not going to go well. Like, I'll do it, I'll do it, like, kind of the, the, um, beginner way, I guess, and we'll see how it goes. So, like, I guess I'd be, like, over here, and then, like, yeah, they shoot you from the side. And it worked out, I mean, but it was kind of, it's kind of iffy a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, those, yeah, it's, like, it's, like, the boats from the side, and, and then the turrets. But like, yeah, so like, having the knowledge though that uh, they don't fu like the boats won't fire when you're closer to them, like that it really helps. Yeah, and then you get to the second loop and that doesn't happen and then you're screwed and you die. Yeah, then you have to, <laughs> kinda, yeah, you do have to fix your strategies quite a bit in the, uh, in the loop. Oh man, I didn't, I didn't kill him fast enough. You got me. That big plane. Anyway, yeah, it looks like uh, I got notched to the next checkpoint here. I um, I don't know if this game does it because I've never failed that hard before, but I know in uh, Kyoku Tiger, if you die too close to the beginning of a checkpoint while you're like trying to recover from it, it'll actually bump you back a checkpoint. Mm. Oh, okay. But I'm not sure if this game does it or not. I want to say it doesn't. Yeah, I get the feeling that it doesn't, but, you know, never sure, because there's lots of checkpoints I've not seen before. Yeah, there's a game, uh, Plus Alpha actually does that to you in the last stage. It punishes you in the last stage for, uh, for dying a lot, and pushes uh. you back further and further. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh, you should show the uh, shooting gallery checkpoint thing. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if it, uh, hopefully I didn't get bumped yeah. up there. Yeah. This is this is area fifty one apparently. I might have got fifty. Might have been the shooting gallery. <laughs> we'll see here. Oh, I'm at the ocean. Okay. Cool. So you should be able to. Avoid shooting those tanks. Oh yeah, so yeah, I'll just, I'll just pretend I don't know about them. <laughs> <laughs> On the left, coming up. But yeah, they make your day pretty pretty hellish if you if you like if you forget about them. It even happens to me, it happens to me occasionally. When I come back and play this. Well, sometimes. I mean, by now I know that they're there, but. Uh, to respond to the chat, uh, Ninja Gaiden actually only does that in one place, I think. Or, actually, there's two places that do that. The last area in the game, I believe, sends you back, like, three worlds, and then the boss in 5-3 will send you all the way back to the beginning of 5-3. Yeah, there's the shooting gallery. <laughs> yeah, so, don't do this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was dodging it a little bit. Like, I might have been able to get through. Alright, let's see if we can actually get through with the shooting gallery. <laughs> it's, it's kind of defeating the purpose now. Well, you, you, well you, you should learn that they're there and then kill them properly, but I'll just try to show off here. <laughs> Yeah, this checkpoint, they kind of throw you back quite a bit. You gotta go past the Yeah, ball. it's a really long checkpoint. So this one, they uh, really were thinking about, I guess. It's nice, though, because it has two sort of... I wouldn't... Power-up waves, I guess. Be, but they sometimes switch between power-ups and points. So yeah. if you miss the first one, you get a chance on the second one. Or if you miss that one, you get a third one to get the power-up on. The shooting gallery. And yeah, if you stay all the way to the right on the shooting gallery, they are uh, off screen. And they won't shoot you anymore, which that's, is yeah, that's a good, handy. That's good. Yeah, that is a uh, yeah, that's definitely something to consider too in, in uh, these kind of older games. In Raiden, that's the case as well. One of them was still shooting at me though. 
He must have been just barely on, on the part there. But yeah, I just kind of beasted it. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Suppose it's when it's not a real run. It's like you don't have the pressure on. Yeah. When I was uh, first playing this game, like man, it it got so intense. Some of the parts. Oh yeah, like, for sure. I'm uh, usually shaking a little bit after loop one's done. Yeah, like if if you if you start learning this game, like it it really brings you for a ride. Because like you get the feeling that like all the bullets are chasing you a lot and that type of thing. I'm gonna die on purpose. <laughs> and like sometimes uh, you'll get into a situation that you you know you really didn't want to get into and like it's just like you're flying around, you're like dodging bulls from like all directions and you're often like you're often feeling like, How the hell am I doing this? Yeah. It <laughs> It has a way of making you feel godlike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alright, so this is just like this checkpoint before the power up, you get a bomb. Before the uh, tank thingy as well. You get two power ups here at this checkpoint. Yeah, definitely preparing you for the uh, tank after. Yeah. So I'll, sh I'll show off yeah, what the tank does if you don't like bomb spam them like you did. Kind of shoots in like little bursts. Yeah, and the bursts get longer real quick. I think they get longer faster the more you damage it. Oh yeah, you might be right about that. He's still, he's still chugging. <laughs> oh man, that last one was super long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's not shooting in a straight line either, it's off to the side, back and forth, which with each shot. Yeah, he's a pretty it's a pretty interesting enemy. Because of the, because of that. He's kinda got a trick he's got a, got a couple tricks up his sleeve there. It's pretty fun. Like damage him more and like the shot comes. Oh no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, being on the left side of the screen, not too good because, you know, I don't have much space to dodge over there. Yeah. So it's like, I got, I just got trapped and then like the green planes were shooting at me. So they also like pushed me forward because they trapped me from behind. I, I, I want to see if I can keep it alive though until it like parks in the garage. <laughs> well, uh, while damaging it. If you just avoid shooting it, then it shouldn't shoot too long of bursts. Right, right. But I, I mean, I want to try to shoot it though. <laughs> just a bit. Because I mean, the bursts, I mean, when it's only like the little bursts, it's not that bad. Like he's, like he's slow and. Alright, he's going to the garage. Uh oh. Gonna wanna get that green plane. Or just avoid him. Yeah. He went to the garage, yeah! <laughs> Dang, Aquas <Oculus> godlike. <laughs> Alright. Wait, he's back! With the other guy now! <laughs> Whoa! That's awesome. <laughs> uh oh! Oh, he's he, he's decided wow. to stop firing. Oh, he's firing again. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I had no idea it would do that. He finally went away. He gave up. <laughs> he gave up in his efforts. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Yes! Ah, <laughs> Do the loopy loop! Do the loopy God. loop! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Do the loop! That was sweet. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die here. So, this is one of the other harder checkpoints. It's the one that you actually did in your run. 
Yeah. Do the loop. That's that's like the classic uh, shmup uh, like wild maneuver. That's when you like fly to the top of the screen and then all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> and it works sometimes. Yeah, it's crazy how often I've done that and had it work. Yeah, it actually works, yeah. <laughs> if you're careful about it. Alright, so it's like, here you can just like throw a bomb in those first three turrets. Get them out of the way. And then then I like to try to get that, that middle turret, make sure that that one is destroyed. <clears throat> and then you probably should bomb again. Yeah, I usually drop two or three bombs here, just... Yep. Yeah, this is becoming a, a combination of messing around and uh, demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. There we go. Very nice. So like, yeah, like, it's really helpful to kind of bide your time sometimes. Uh, with the bombs, cause you, you cause like I kind of waited there, and then I kind of just waited for my like once I was close enough to get a bomb in, then I threw one down. But also I was like kind of really I was trying to really pay attention to the uh, turrets um, firing rates too, cause uh, I don't know once you play shmups enough, you kind of get a feel for like the firing rates of enemies, and then you can kind of sense when there's gonna be a. Like a gap in the bullets, basically. Yeah, it's that's definitely the biggest thing learning this, is just learning when everything's going to fire. <clears throat> yeah, I'd say so. It, it, it is actually really important for the recovery. Alright, so that was kind of cool. Alright, I'm going to die again. Just recovering my way to the end. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, once you get to the loop though, recovering does get quite a bit different. Like you are talking about before, like your strategies have to change because uh, the enemies kind of behave a bit differently. And that type of yeah, thing. and the uh, all the tanks and boats get like three more hits for the main body, so it takes forever to kill them with the pea shooter. Yeah. So I just like threw down a bomb right away there to get those planes. That's kind of one thing I, I, I like to do when I was learning the game. Because uh, those blue planes just come so suddenly that they can kind of like, they kind of follow you into a corner sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, you, and then you recovered here as well with the uh, two big boats and the turrets. Like yeah, it, I don't yeah. think this recovery is really that hard. I mean, the one before that can be kind of tricky with the blue planes, but this one right here isn't too bad. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting, making sure all the turrets kind of go down. All right, I'm gonna die again. Right after that <laughs> part, see, see what this is. See if it threw me ahead. Oh, it didn't. It didn't. It wasn't quite there. Ouch. <laughs> Even though, like, I saw, I was like over the ocean and everything, so it wasn't quite there. It is kind of interesting to see where where all the checkpoints, yeah, the, where they start and end. So I think the key thing at, at this checkpoint is just uh, making sure you're not gonna dodge into the bullets. Like, yeah. Like, that's kind of the main thing you just want to avoid doing. So this is definitely like the part where you, we, should, we should kind of bomb these big planes. I usually yeah. always bomb them, actually, when I'm recovering here. So yeah, that's yeah. definitely something you should it's, do. Uh, I think I usually bomb that first big plane in most of my runs, just because those boats on the right tend to be really difficult to deal with. You missed the bomb, man. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna die on purpose again. Cause this, cause this part gets really hectic. It's probably one of the harder checkpoints. 
Yeah, definitely. Oh, I died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is, uh, 86, apparently. Getting closer. So here I, I like to get the tank on the right as they come out, just so I don't have to deal with them again. Yeah. But then that part, like, this, the, the guy on the left there is annoying because the big rock gets in the way of your bullets. So I kind of had to bomb there, otherwise those guys pretty much get free shots off on me. Yeah. There's, uh, extends every, uh... Th there's extends on the first 50,000 points, and then every 150,000 after that. And then there's some one-up planes every once in a while that we aren't really sure how they're picked. Yeah. Alright, so it looks like, uh, yeah, I made it past that part, uh, even though I died on purpose at the end there. Looks like I made the checkpoint. It's a pretty important one, because now this is ba this is basically the end of the game now. Yeah, whenever I see this ocean, I'm just like, yes, I'm almost there. Yeah. It's in the bag. Like, yeah, yeah, the, the turrets in the front of this boat, like, yeah, uh, these kind of turrets are the ones that change probably the most in the loop. Like, they turn, they aim at you a lot faster, and they also, yeah. they also fire at you a little bit more often, I think. But yeah, I mean, you have to adjust your strategies against them. Yeah, the turning on them is way faster, so it's a lot harder to deal with. But I, I pretty much I just, I just like to hover over them immediately, and that does the trick. Alright, well, I'm at the boss now, I'm just gonna die again. So, yeah, this I is, think yeah. this is the only checkpoint that I personally can't recover from without auto fire, just because I can't really tap that fast. Yeah, well, like, you only really benefit if you're close enough to uh, actually, like, get the auto fire rate high. Because otherwise, I, I, like, I kind of max out when I'm, like, back here. Right. But it, do, it does actually help to get a bit closer. Otherwise, you probably won't take that much, enough damage, really. So, yeah, like I say, it's like, you don't want to dodge into the bullets. So I'm kind of, like, avoiding that. Now I'm just bombing, and I took them out. And, uh... Pretty much how I do it there. But yeah, yeah, like I say, yeah, the trick there is not to dodge into the bullets because those blue pla like you gotta take note of the blue pl blue planes and uh, what direction they're coming from, and then you gotta make yeah. sure you're dodging away from them, basically. Yeah, a thing that I found helpful when I was trying to practice that for recovery was uh, knowing that they come on the opposite side of the screen that you're on. Stay on one side until all three of them come out and then move over to kill them. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a good tip. Yeah, uh, Yoishi mentioned uh, the tank, the ground tanks didn't appear. It's because, uh, yeah, if you wait long enough, if you wait long enough to kill the big plane, the ground tanks don't spawn, which is actually uh, really kind of beneficial because those ground tanks are the ones that, uh, well, they. Uh, I mean, it's, it's 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 a lot easier to just dodge the pl the airplanes because they're just you can just move yeah. left and right, and they're they're not going to be like. Yeah, they don't try to you. run into you anyways, so... Yeah. So yeah, now that we're in the loop, um, it does become quite a bit more difficult to recover. Um, I guess I'll try to do it in earnest. Because, uh, it's actually a lot more difficult. Oh! The red, uh, the red plane flew into me. <laughs>
Yeah, I've been thinking of looking into figuring out why the extends come out, but uh, I don't know, I just haven't really bothered yet. But I do intend to at some point. I didn't get the red planes, so that would probably haunt me here. Yeah, probably. Like, you really gotta make sure you try to get those power-ups in the loop as well, because that's like, that's the main thing about getting back in it, is having the firepower. But yeah, the little boats take a ton more damage in the loop, which makes things a lot harder with no power-ups. Alright, so I made it through, um, kind of due to my knowledge of the enemy placement, for the most part. Like, that's really going to make the, di the, the main difference to surviving in the game once you uh, kind of get to this level. It eventually just boils down to that, and then uh, doing your dodges, kind of doing your dodges correctly. We'll take a. We'll I actually have to take a look. Um, I'm probably gonna be wrapping this up real quick here. I died, crap. But I'll probably just be wrapping up, and then I'll uh, uh, take a look at the uh, that like uh, eighth loop replay I was showing a bit at the beginning of the episode. Um, oh to get, yeah. Trying to get an idea what that's like. Yeah, because I think the difficulty maxes out somewhere in the middle of loop three. Yeah. Shit, I'm like dicking around. Those bulls are fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll try to recover others this one. Maybe once or twice more. Just yeah, the little boats are definitely little devils. <laughs> yeah. Bullet, the bullet speed does dramatically increase in the loop. Right, so oh yeah, I'll bond, I'll bond with this beginning part here. Shit, I gotta get those tanks. Oh. Yeah, that tank just flew away. I think I've recovered here in an actual run before. It's like, it's pretty, it's pretty challenging, like, you really gotta try to make sure you kill the guy on the left, and I usually like to use a bomb against him, at the big tank. But he didn't, he didn't go down, so I didn't, kinda got caught up in the mix there. Alright, this is going better. How you take him out. There he goes. Then I only have to worry about this guy. Nicely done. You get plenty of time to take him out because nothing else happens here. Then yeah, you have this plane that comes from the bottom left. So yeah, there I was uh, just really uh, focused on getting the, that, that like kind of second tank that was coming out of the little cave. Because if I let that one alive and I was flying back to that right side, he was probably going to be like at the bottom of the screen enough that he was probably going to take me out when I was trying to come back to get him. So that's why I kind of waited for him to come out. So recovery is still doable in like the second loop. Um, it does it does get ridiculous though at some checkpoints, um, and and in the third loop too. Like everything kind of escalates once you're that far, and you and then you're at the hard checkpoint that we checked out earlier. Like then you just get destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, Icarus. That was partly my feeling too, but I really don't want to believe that it's RNG based because it's such a good game in every way that that would kind of just stick a rock in it. Yeah. Yeah, so I did that. I did that little section good. Oh, that's a nice strategy. I should 
probably watch that again. Yeah, kind of like the circle around a bit. Yeah, because that spot likes to get me. Just because those boats in the bottom right that end up shooting me while I'm trying to take out the big boat. Yeah, you have to be pretty careful. Uh, like that one, I for sure like died a lot on trying to figure it out. So most annoyingly during a run, <laughs> it's like oh god damn it. Yeah, Jamers, I'm also sort of thinking it might have something to do with how many enemies you've killed or something, but it has to be like a specific value when the power-up carrier comes out or something like that, which is why sometimes you won't see one for like the entire game. Sometimes I just I never see the one up planes to be honest. So that makes me think that there's something triggering it. Oh wow. Oh that, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've gotten killed by that plenty of times before. Yeah. It's really depressing because the runway is right there. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I if I wait a little bit longer, I can get on. The yeah, you want to wait for it to not be all the way at the edge of the oh, screen. Then a green plane got me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe one more credit. Yeah, let's see if we can recover here, and then uh, I think we could probably go check out the uh, that eight that crazy replay, and then right. kind of wrap things up for the episode. Sounds good. We got a decent idea of what their covering is like. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, fuck it. I mean, at this point, you're. Just, I mean, if you're right, if you're right by the runway, there's no point not to bomb. Yeah. So it's like you're supposed to use them. And I and I was watching that guy, the this other guy the, with the eight, the crazy replay. Like he bombs like pretty much like everywhere when uh -huh. he's uh, because the bullets just go so fast in those later loops. Like he has to use yeah. them like to actually reliably get out of certain situations. Yeah. Maybe oh, Jamers. You and your V five. <laughs> oh, I was just, I wasn't even really paying attention. <laughs> 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 I was like, dude, do you do? This is not a real run. I don't really have to care. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's just play out this credit here and then we'll move on. So I'm at right. my last life. And, uh, Icarus, yeah, Dio had some uh, really weird one. It was a timer that was also related to your. Uh, the power-ups you picked up and what shot type you were using but Dio is weird and Athena likes randomness so At this point, it's just a matter of being good. <laughs> or executing the plan, at least. Right. Yeah, the, uh, in Dio, the, uh, one-ups are not really random, but kinda. But getting a two-up instead of a one-up is entirely random. So, that can't be predicted, but it's a bit of a tangent, because Dio isn't really related to Flying Shark. <laughs> and, 
That was kind of a crazy dodge, but it didn't pay off. Yeah. The green plane shot at me. <laughs> like, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> I dodged that green plane shot. Oh, but I got bumped up a checkpoint. Alright, this is a pretty tough one in the loop. And I died. Yeah. <laughs> So there you have it, there's a demonstration of recovery in uh, Flying Shark. It can be done. Yep. I'm putting ah with the H's. <laughs> Alright, so I think we'll... I, I should give you a link to that YouTube video so we can watch it. Okay. Together, actually. Let's go ahead and get you that. Oops. Uh, Icarus, yeah, that was probably what I was going to do when I wanted to look for it, is just uh, set some watch points and break points all over and see if I can figure it out. Actually, right. why don't you go to that uh, second link for a yep. specific time? Yep, got so it. Yeah. 12716? Yeah. Alright. Just pause it. it loads up. Yep. Alrighty. And I shall get this set up on the stream and uh, we'll take a look at this and try to wrap things up. Alrighty. Of course, uh, yeah, so this video, the guy is actually playing on uh, the actual board on his cabinet. Pretty cool. Um, it's going to work. It's going to fit like this. Eh, whatever. Yeah, that works. Alright, so let's take a look at uh, some high loop gameplay from Flying Shark. This is by uh, TV T Vespa is Freak. Uh, I don't know what his handle is exactly, but that's his YouTube name. Um, TV S P E L S Freak. I don't know what that. But he's playing the uh, playing the Japanese version here. Um, default difficulty, no auto fire. All right. So I'll do a countdown. He's Swedish. Oh, okay. All right, I'll do a countdown. Three, two, one, click. All right. So I just kind of picked a random time here. It looks like he's at that tough, that one tough chuck point we were just doing though. That you that you did in your run as well. Right. And he's got like three million points or something at this point. Looks like. Something like that, I think. And he just dies right away. <laughs> <laughs> There's two hours left in this video, mind you. Mind the uh, viewers. So this is he's going to recover from this, even in the high loop. So it's kind of interesting. So he uses the bomb there. After he, after he weakens the turret still. He uses a bomb there. And another one. So the one on the right was just to protect himself from bullets so that he could get to the left and then he just used another one once he was hurting bullets. Because once you're hurting bullets, you're pretty much in the clear until you need to, you know, go to the right again or the left. Yeah. It's kind of the basis of the gameplay. It's like you're in the clear when you're moving in one direction and then when you have to switch directions to, you know, fly to the other side of the screen... That's when you have to kind of make a judgment on the, you know, the bullet speed, um, how many enemies are firing at you, etc. And that kind of, that type of gameplay is uh, very common in Raiden as well. It's pretty much what Raiden is the you know, foundation of the Raiden gameplay is there. Died again. Yep. It looks pretty rough. The bullets are going really damn fast. Yeah, I'm guessing it's probably like loop. Five or six yeah. by now. Yeah, he just uses them like crazy when he's just recovering the bombs. 
anything that anything to get like one power up is pretty much essential. Yeah, for sure. Oh, he, oh. he just barely missed that tank. That's a uh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, because one shot would take out would would take out the uh, cannon. He'd be mashing. Oh, and that he sucks. And he fucked up again. <laughs> <laughs> gotta give him a break though once you're this far <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've never been this far shit yeah no way three million that's quite a score yeah for sure this uh he's uh got essentially not really the counter stop but sort of like the accepted top score for world record stuff and uh maxed out the area counter oh okay yeah yeah i think the points are supposed to max out at 10 million or something like that i don't think it actually maxes out there no oh. it might because i know or rather i believe a lot of games like for the high score stuff they stop caring what your score is past a certain amount because the only way to get there is to play for like eight hours straight and that's kind of absurd yeah but i might be wrong on that it's just that's what it seems like man he's just dying every every which boy so now we're actually seeing another, re uh, you know, recovery demonstration <laughs> <laughs> from a, a player who's much better. That's cool. <laughs> Should have shown the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I uh, it was it was a thing. It was fun. Yeah. Because I mean, not everyone has played the game is, or is going to as much as this guy. So I mean, I'd be at more at the level of kind of maybe average-ish people. Anyway, dang, I another death. <laughs> yeah, 10 million plus alpha is generally what people consider to be the uh, counter stop ish. I mean, I think yeah, that's what I'm I was pretty sure the to. score goes past 10 million, but oh. I they stop caring about the score past then for submissions on uh, like Arcadia and whatever. Well, then what, what is it judged on after that? So. I think after that it just doesn't matter because the game's already basically done. Oh. Because if you want to go past that, you're already playing well, hours wait, wait, and hours, hours or whatever. and hours. Yeah, it's like more than eight hours though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like all day. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Oh yeah, so there you saw that uh, he was not sealing the bullets of the turret, so he pretty much has to destroy it, I think, immediately, or something like that. I don't know. See how he does it here. So he goes, hovers over it. Wow, those turn really fast now. Yeah, they just lock on to you. Yeah, that's crazy. And he's okay. He's okay, just yeah. So he's just dropping a bomb and waiting for it to scroll up and hit it. Right. I'm gonna turn my volume up a little bit. Oh, okay. So Icarus just confirmed. Uh, as soon as you hit ten million, um, it's uh, whoever's like got the record is whoever gets to that score on the earliest stage. Oh, okay. And I guess that's how most of the games that have the sort of pseudo counter stop work that makes sense then it's like more like a score attack yeah even though it's like a eight hour score attack but yeah <laughs> but it's like it's being efficient oh, he oh man he's yeah. actually uh is he actually running out of lives now yeah, yeah he is. it's actually starting to go down now he's probably starting to worry a bit yeah i think i would too after like an hour and a half of playing <laughs> yeah, right. So 
So yeah, kind of. Hmm. Dang. There's the bomb. Yeah, he waited for the lull in the uh, green planes to then start flying the other direction. It's funny as uh, button tapping is like compressing the uh, audio from the game. <laughs> 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 like it, it, it's 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 loud for a moment, but then he starts button mashing. Awesome. <laughs> Probably hear it on the stream, on my button mashing as well in the stream a bit. Oh, so Pestro just said, uh, Fells, the to TV spells freak, whatever. Yeah. I don't know how to say it. If you could tell me how to say that, that would be really nice, Pestro. But, um, apparently he submitted a score of 16.6 million and said it took him over seven hours to get that score. Actually, I think I remember him submitting it pretty He's yeah, pretty much the best data on the forum. Wow. I want to be that good. <laughs> Just play all day. Yep. Clear my schedule. I'm playing He Shows Me for yep. one credit. Yep. Oh, he made it to the next stage. So, I don't know. We'll watch this for like another, like, I don't know, 10 minutes or maybe or so. If people really want to see more of it, I mean, let us know, I guess. But you can always watch parts of it too on your own. It's like a th it's a three hour and thirty minute video, so <laughs> <laughs> we're at the hour and thirty six minute mark. So about half. No, this is uh, not the recovery demonstration anymore. Now it's, uh, well, I guess it is kind of a recovery demonstration, but it's not meant to be. It's uh, really high-level play from a guy on the forums who can marathon this game. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're looking at now. But he did, yeah, he was recovering multiple times there, so... I guess if you get this far, you know, <laughs> yeah. you would do it like he does. Use those bombs. Yeah, you have to wonder if the uh, arcade owners in Japan would uh, turn the difficulty up when people play this long. <laughs> like, I'll show them. <laughs> Turns it to like eight, like uh, it's at like difficulty four. Turns it to eight. It's like heh. <laughs> <laughs> Although this one just goes from like normal to hard, I believe. It's yeah. Difficulty. I actually like to play it on hard because uh, it makes the bolts in the first loop a little bit faster and makes the oh, first really? loop, it makes the first loop a bit more enjoyable for me. Huh. Yeah, I believe the game doesn't get harder after. Uh, like the middle of loop 3 so loop 4 should be the same rank throughout the entire loop and uh, Alexi there is no pause button if you have to use the bathroom you better be prepared to lose some lives yeah I think he actually mentioned that he uh, he did or maybe thinking of a different run but I think it was uh, somebody it was somebody on the, on the forum mentioned they'd did something like that. I, I, it might have been him. I think I might have been checking it, yeah. But it's like, he probably spent, I mean, to go to the bathroom, you probably at least, in this game, you probably need at least, like, eight or nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> at least. Probably, probably 11. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, oh, so he, yeah, he did, Pestro said he did, okay, yeah. 
I mean, it's like when you have so many lives, it's like it's mo it's mostly uh, dependent on your skill if you're gonna keep playing. Yeah. Like, kind of the ratio of like how many lives to uh, like surviving after a certain point becomes kind of a moot point. Uh, what, uh, depending on whether or not you kind of know how to do it, or you can't yeah. do it. Damn. So yeah, he's all fully powered up and stuff again, so he probably stays, well maybe hopefully he stays this way for a while. Yeah, and that little uh, boat there, you can't destroy it on the first pass, so it's a kind of a little place where you can milk points by damaging it but then you can then it's destroyable once you come back destructible oh nice I think you killed it before it even fired yeah I uh, tend to do that too if you just stay there and mash really hard you can kill it before it even gets a shot out oh. Um, I don't think this is the world record holder. This is just, like, a guy. Yeah, it's just somebody. And, I mean, from what Icarus said, you're not going to get 10 million plus alpha until you've maxed out the area counter anyways, so it doesn't really matter that he's not technically the world record holder because he basically is tied with the world record. Yeah. Maybe we can just watch to the. Uh, this is uh, the last stage? No, this oh, is four, stage four. four. Okay. Maybe watch to the end of the stage and then maybe wrap it up. I don't know. Alright, that sounds reasonable. I think we've, uh, let's see how long we've been going. Uh, oh man, already an hour and 30 minutes. Shit. <laughs> yeah, probably wrap. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up after he completes this stage. Shit, that, that took. Uh, no, man. No, a bit longer than I expected there. <laughs> guess I was doing my. I guess I was doing the recovery thing for at least like forty minutes. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, I see. Okay, so. Yeah, he just bomb spams it, and make, <laughs> he makes sure you can deal the damage to it as well. Like, that's kind of what I do yeah. as well. Yeah, because while you're bombing, you might as well just get up close and mash like crazy. Yeah. I don't think I have it on stream, but his, his uh, like... Button mashing finger is like a blur on the video. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing that, and it's making me a bit crazy. <laughs> I need the other one. Nice. It's a little hard to see the bullets in this video. Okay. Dang. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Dang. That was really good. That was pretty uh, special. <laughs> Just that perfect bomb placement there to protect. Yeah. Them. For sure. Wow, really good bomb placement.
Oh wow, just did like three full sweeps there. I see. Nice. All right, all right. We gotta wrap up the episode. As much as long as much as I want to watch like a little bit more of this, but <laughs> this is pretty long. I didn't, I didn't expect it to go this long, so. I'll I'll just play the uh, video um in the title in the title card while we wrap this up, so I guess uh, but uh yeah so Flying Shark um yeah, it's a pretty fun game uh despite being pretty old uh yeah like like we like I've said uh pretty much uh one of these games that kind of pioneered um kind of uh, made the foundation for like the fundamental shmup gameplay um maybe not uh I mean. I think I mean probably like more so a uh, better way to explain it is like it polished it um, after maybe Tiger Heli and uh, maybe Slap Fight, but I think this one really polished it up, and then Raiden um, kind of looks like really really kind of polished it up with kind of a, you know more detailed graphics and stuff, and that's kind of what we got to experience in America. But Flying Shark Cabs, I mean, it was it was popular in America as well a, a little bit. Like I've I've seen like. I've I've seen pictures of the cabs and stuff, and I I feel like I feel like it's around. I, I know there's actually an arcade around here in Minnesota that actually has a cabinet of it, but I haven't been there yet. So I feel like it's like one of these that's like, you know, it's still kind of around and type of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, really I like yeah, we, uh, me and Trav really like the game. I recommend uh, trying it out. Uh, yeah, using those bombs before uh, you finish a stage and getting the bombs refilled and all that. It's it's a pretty good game and it's fun to play. The music's good and there's all sorts of ports and it's just it's just a good ass game. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, if you're in Trap STGT, go play it because you know you're supposed to. Oh yeah, yeah. That's kind of why we did the episode as well, is because. Uh, yeah, during uh, the tournament uh, Trap was running for the Shmups Forum. Um, yeah, it was it's the final game of the tournament, right? Yep. Yeah, so th- so it's actually ending uh, this this Sunday, right? Is that right? Uh, or... Monday. Oh, it's, Monday. It ends midnight Tuesday in Greenwich Mean Time, which I guess is Monday night for the U.S. and Tuesday morning for Europe. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of when we did the episode, and you know, uh, I always I kind of wanted to do a uh, flying shark episode for quite a while because it is one of my favorites as well. Um, it's just it's just a good one, and uh, it's a good one to play. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. Uh, hey, frenetic, <laughs> <laughs> joining the chat now. I've met up in here. Let's imitate him there. Frenetic right. in the house. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for the episode. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, don't, not quite sure what we're doing next week, but something, something cool. Um, I'm going to try to do another episode, another episode of Awesome Game Replays also probably soon because it's been a few weeks since we did the Ghouls and Ghosts one. But, yep, so that's what's going down. Uh, yeah, thanks, Trap, for uh, coming on, talking about Flying Shark with me. Yep, always a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, so this will wrap it up. Yep, thanks all for coming by, and... Uh, See you around.